Please do welcome Lamont Dozier to this program, the legendary singer, songwriter, and producer, teamed up with two brothers to form one of the most successful and prolific songwriting trios in music history. All in all, Holland Dozier Holland is responsible for nearly 30 number one Motown hits and were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame back in 1980. As I mentioned at the top, the three have reunited to write the music for the Broadway version of the hit movie, The First Wives Club. More on that in a moment, but as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of Motown this year, here now, just a small sample of Lamont Dozier's iconic work. Still sound good to you? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I don't listen to it all the time, but dude, when I hear it, yeah. I say, well, I really wrote that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, a, it's gives, it still gives me a boost, yeah. you know what I mean? When you say you don't listen to it all the time, it's kind of hard to turn on radio oh, these yeah. days or not hear it. Well, not hear it, oh, yeah, yeah. You hear it all the time. Walking though. in the supermarket, yeah. I mean, the stuff is blasting, yeah. you know? We, the minute you hear it, I assume, though, your ear must connect to it immediately. Oh, yeah. When you hear just a, a couple notes, you know that's, oh, yeah. that's your stuff. Yeah, I used, you know what I used to do? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm the cook in the family. Yeah. So. Uh, I used to go to the, the grocery store. When mm -hmm. I'm in the grocery store and they, I'm hearing something, I used to have that feeling like I want to tell somebody. You know, I I, 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 I wrote that. You, you know, know, I wrote that. <laughs> but then uh, I did that a couple of times. And people thought, oh, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, they think you're crazy. You so know, you stopped but, doing that. Yeah, I said, I said, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, have you written so many hits over the years that you have forgotten? I. I I hear your point when you hear stuff, yeah. you know you wrote it, yeah. but have you written so much stuff that you've forgotten that you wrote certain stuff? Yeah, you do. I yeah. mean, it's, some of the things are not as popular right. as some of the, right. and some of the things, uh, uh, some of the stations, they'll play some obscure song from an album mm -hmm. that uh, doesn't sound familiar, but I'm not sure. There might be one that uh, yeah. I, I penned, but yeah. it's hard to say sometimes. Yeah. You know? We've been having a good time around here for the better part of this year, oh, it's yeah. early in the year, um, because we've been having so many conversations yeah. about this 50th anniversary of Motown. Yeah. Barry Gordy was here for mm. two nights. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Ashford and Simpson recently yeah. here. Mm -hmm. so we're rolling them through here yeah. as, as the year yeah. moves on. Lionel Richie was here yeah. earlier this yeah. year. Yeah. Um, what do you make of the fact that it's been 50 years <laughs> Man, of Motown it, hits? It, it, it went sort of fast in one regard, or yeah. I, I, I missed a couple of decades or yeah. something, because <laughs> it was going so fast, and now here it is, 50 years with this music, and, yeah. it, and it's still going strong around the world. Yeah. Everywhere I go, I travel quite a bit, throughout London especially, right. it's right. like that. In Japan, you know, the, the people love this stuff, you know. You know, it's amazing about the work that you, the work that you and, and the brothers did. It's not just good music, it's not just that you wrote a bunch of hits mm -hmm. and you did all of that. Right. Um, but in a very real way, what you did is the soundtrack to people's lives. Mm -hmm. It's not just a hit here or there, not, yeah. not just a good song here or there, mm -hmm. but your stuff is the soundtrack to people's lives. You, yeah. you, ever, you ever think about that? Yeah, yeah, I've heard that a lot too, yeah. the soundtrack of America. Yeah. And I've had people call me from all races. They walk up to me with tears in their eyes because yeah. I was I was hearing this stuff in college and it's a great feeling it gives you. And yeah. uh, to have something like that that has been around for 50 years, when I thought uh, at the time I can remember uh, in the 60s talking to Brian Holland yeah. about, uh, you know, I said, man, I think we stumbled into something that might be around for a while, you know, because right. we were getting like number one, number one, one after the other with, uh, with the Supremes and the right. Four Tops and Marvin. And it was just spooky, man. Yeah. I mean, to have that much success. Yeah. When, you, when, you, when you say spooky, this may be an impossible question. Let me ask anyway. You may not have known it then. For that matter, you may not mm -hmm. know it now. But do, do you have any idea of, of, of what you hit upon, what was happening in that period mm -hmm. when you were rolling these hits? Mm -hmm. I mean, was there something? I mean, I'm just trying to get a sense of yeah. whether you know why you all hit it mm -hmm. in that moment and mm -hmm. just kept hitting it. Timing is everything, it, it, you know, as you, you probably heard, and, yeah. and, and, and in a lot of respects in this music. I think in the 60s, things were not looking good for music. Mm -hmm. uh, just before uh, we started in 62, uh, HDH teaming up together, right. Elvis had gone to the Army, so they, a lot mm -hmm. of people said, well, that's the end of rock and roll. Uh, and I told you it wouldn't last a lot of the naysayers. And then here we come out of Detroit, or some obscure place where that, that mm. people would never think uh, by a, a black-owned uh, guy, uh, uh, you know, that put all this together. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting that it would uh, be so big and last for so long. During 
that 60s when the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the race riots and, and all type of riots, not necessarily race riots, but mm -hmm. the riots of the 60s, mm -hmm. I could see these people, the tanks coming down West Grand Boulevard. It was like just scary and weird. And then the uh, Kennedy getting killed mm -hmm. in 63 and... It was just very, but we were kept on pumping our love for stuff, you mm -hmm. know, that feel good music, mm -hmm. and regardless what was happening. But it was one or two things, uh, one in particular, uh, Nowhere to Run, mm -hmm. uh, which you just played, that mm -hmm. uh, that was one that stuck out in my mind, but and it stimulated me to the point of I was trying to say something, you know, mm -hmm. with the music that we're in a situation where nobody has anywhere to run. If we don't run together, come together, mm -hmm. it's going to always stay that way. It was, mm -hmm. it was like a, a double entendre, you might say, of what's, what was To happening. your point, uh, Lamont, even when your message had a double entendre in it, even mm -hmm. when your music, rather, had a message to it, yeah. you said something, and I, I swear to you, every time I talk to a Motown artist, mm -hmm. somewhere in the conversation it comes out, it's as if y'all are programmed this mm -hmm. way. <laughs> and I know, I, I, and I know y'all ain't got no memo to stay on talking points <laughs> everywhere you go. So this is how I know it's real. Okay. You cannot talk to a Motown artist about that era, about mm -hmm. this last 50 years, mm -hmm. and not hear the word L-O-V-E. I don't care whether you're talking That's to Barry right. Gordy or Stevie Wonder or Ashby and Simpson or Lionel Richie. The word love mm -hmm. always seems to come through. It's mm -hmm. like that was like part of y'all's mm -hmm. writing formula. And yeah. It had to have some love in it. And we would not be strayed uh, or pushed into another direction because mm -hmm. that was, whether we, it was, it may not have been that conscious, but it mm -hmm. was, it was what was there, what, what we were uh, facing every day. Mm -hmm. It was like a love fest as corny as it may sound, mm -hmm. but the music and what we wrote about, right, the unre unrequited love mm -hmm. and about one-on-one uh, -on -one situations with boy and girl and, and, and what we uh, thought about each other as, mm -hmm. as races coming together. And uh, I always thought that coming to Motown was a, was, was a fulfillment for me because I always wanted to bring music or make music that would bring people together. Mm. And uh, so the love is yeah. apropos, you know, yeah. in this particular case. You mentioned a moment ago, Nowhere to Run, Nowhere to Hide, yeah. how that song came to be. Yeah. I am always, and you know where I'm going with this, I am <laughs> always fascinated when I talk to songwriters about the backstory to the music. We yeah. know the song, yeah. we, we all know the words, but it's always the backstory that, that mm -hmm. tickles me and turns yeah. me on. Yeah. So you talk about Nowhere to Run, Nowhere mm -hmm. to Hide. Mm -hmm. How did um, Stop in the Name of Love <laughs> Somebody must have told you something. You, you know I know the story. <laughs> you know I know. That's why I asked you on national television. So tell the story about how that came well, to be. you know, uh, there was some uh, things that I was doing uh, that were not... I was not a very good guy, you mm -hmm. know. I was fooling around with a couple of girls, mm -hmm. and one of the girls, the main squeeze, yeah. heard about it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, came down to this place where I was hiding out with the other Miss mm -hmm. Pretty. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and uh, when they got there, uh, when she got there, started knocking on the door and everything, all, all hell broke loose. Got ugly. Know? So yeah, got yeah. ugly. The girl yeah. run out the back door, out yeah. the bathroom window or something mm -hmm. like that. And I said, oh my God. So the girl came in. I opened the door and tried to act like I was. I just woke up. What happened? I was yeah. in the studio all night and I thought I'd come down here just to mm -hmm. rest. And, uh, just what, what's what's all the noise and and she started saying I know where where is she I know she in here somewhere I said, I said what are you talking about I said baby please, please stop in the name of love you know yeah <laughs> and she said <laughs> and the boy uh, and then all of a sudden I said stop in the name of love and I looked at her, I said did you hear that cash register yeah. And she said, that ain't funny. And she said, oh, I'm not laughing, you know. So that day, actually, <laughs> I was trying to defuse wow. the thing, you know. Wow, wow, so wow. So went back to the studio uh, that <laughs> afternoon, and Brian was sitting at the piano, and yeah. he was playing this melody. Na, na, na. Whatever that, that first melody was. Yeah. I said, man, I got the perfect title for this. Stop in the name of love. He said, Oh man, you know, and that's how that song became another number one for the And Supremes. the rest, as they say, is history. Yeah, the rest is history. God. <laughs> I tell you, man, the, the backstory is always oh, the best yeah. part oh, of the song. Yeah. It's a lot of I love the backstory. Yeah. Um, to your point now about that hit, Stop in the Name of Love, mm -hmm. while certainly, and I want to talk through some of them in just a moment here, while you and the brothers wrote songs for a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, at, at Motown, had a lot of number one hits that we've already established. <sighs> 
there was something about the stuff y'all wrote for mm -hmm. the female artist. Yeah. What was that about? Y'all y'all made some big hits with mm -hmm. these female artists. You know, a lot of it comes from being raised by women. Mm -hmm. You know, all three of us were raised by uh, grandmothers primarily, and where, where the mother uh, was at doing day work, mm -hmm. cleaning houses and stuff like that. And uh, and we 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 had that same similarity and uh, growing up and had the same type of circ type of circumstances. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother had a little uh, shop, a little uh, uh, beauty shop, and. Uh, and so all of these stories, I used to, as a kid, used to sweep up the hair and stuff in mm -hmm. the place. And, and the women, some of the women would come and go, yeah, he was out again, and, uh, cry, you know, crying. And my, mm -hmm. and my grandmother was sort of like consoling and, and, and well, girl, see what I told you, what you have to do, you're going to have to do thus and such. Because mm -hmm. if you go that way and let him get away with one, he's going to go with another, and mm -hmm. you just have to put your foot down. And, and <laughs> you know what I mean? I got you. And, uh, and, and I'm sitting there listening, <laughs> sweeping and listening. Said, Lamont, now you go out of here now. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to hear this next part. And, <laughs> and then they start to get deeper into the mm -hmm. stuff, you know. But all those stories, man, I retain yeah. different things about unrequited love and the hurt and the, and, and just the, the mental treatment uh, oh. that they were, they were going through and stayed with me. So a lot of those ideas, well, we came at, but the heroes of the women, mm -hmm. you know. We wanted to make the women feel good because we knew, we heard these stories, you know. It was a similar situation going on with the Hollers in their mm -hmm. household and whatnot. So we got together, whatever we had to feel, everything. First, it had to touch us mm -hmm. when we hit that piano. And then the stories would come as we're doodling and, and working out the melody so the melody would be infectious, come from the inside. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we started to remember and going back. And listening to those stories that we heard from my grandparents and people coming by, and okay, yo, you kids go to bed now. It's, it's, it's grown ups talking in here, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> and they go upstairs, and that was the but you know, a company over the kids want to stay up, you mm -hmm. know. But now listen, listen, and retaining all that stuff, and that's how it happened, man. We both, uh, the, the, the Hollands and I and myself, we 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 came together with that thought in yeah. mind to write for women. Because women were left out. They, they didn't get to the, the share the fair end of the, the, the situation. Speaking yeah. of getting the fair end, it sounds like, sound like grandmama is, is do some royalty somewhere. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big mama should have got some oh, royalty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the grandma was telling the stories or, or packing away the stories. Yeah. Grand, granddaddy, we call him. Yeah. Was, and he used to whistle all over. I, <laughs> I mean, blues whistling, man. You know, yeah. they were from the South, you know, yeah. Alabama. My grandparents, but they could whistle up a storm and and tell these stories and and I just retain all that stuff about human nature, mm -hmm. that's what and that's what a, a lot of it come from. Um, I want to just throw some names at you, some of these groups. And I don't mm -hmm. want to ask any questions. I just want to throw a name out, and you tell me whatever you want to tell me mm -hmm. about about the working relationship. Mm -hmm. I want to start with since we're talking about stopping them, I'll start with the Supremes mm -hmm. um, because it's hard for us to imagine this now on mm -hmm. this side. Mm -hmm. Hard to imagine, but at one point before y'all got a hold to them. They were known inside the company as the no-hit Supremes. The no-hit Supremes. The, they, they didn't have no hits. Yes. And y'all went to work. Yeah. And we, something happened. We had to go to work. We, what we did first, we wrote a song first, a little song called When the Love Light Starts Shining in His Eyes. And that, did, that, that was a top 20, a top 30 song. Mm -hmm. And it did fairly well, but so they dropped back down in that status or the no-hit Supremes area again after mm -hmm. that, and nobody came up with anything. And then suddenly, I came up with this idea, and I was banging on the piano, and baby, baby, where did our love go? Oh, don't you want me? But at first, I was gonna give it to the Marvelous, because the Marvelous was hot. Mm -hmm. And you want your best stuff to go with the oh, hottest yeah. group. You Absolutely, know, we, yeah. we're thinking about coins, too. <laughs> Absolutely, you know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> but but uh, they refused it. They didn't like it at all. They thought, well, what, what is this? This 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 stuff that sounds like a cartoon music or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they did not like and refuse it. They didn't want it. We had cut the track, and I didn't want to be charged for this track that we cut, assuming that they, the girls wouldn't to give us any lip. Mm -hmm. But I said, wow, they, we never had that before. They just said, no, we'll not do it. I said, oh man, I'm gonna get charged for this track. That's the. Oh yeah. That's, that's the. That's the. <laughs> that's, that's the Barry Gordy way. That's the Barry Gordy way. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, Oh my lord! I said, Who can I put it? Oh, looked at the roster, at the bottom of the roster, 
the Supremes, they you know, they can't afford to they, they say need no. They need it here. <laughs> and they ain't gonna dare say no. Yeah. When I got that into my, uh-uh, Mary, but she'll probably tell you, this, uh-uh, we did this hit. What is this? This is horrible. You're always giving us the, 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 the throwaway songs that nobody else wants. So I assume that the Marvelous had talked to them. I said, yeah. well, what that girl? Why'd she do that? But then, <laughs> uh, that's what we did. That's mm-hmm. what, we talked to them, and, and Eddie got, uh, got to talking to Diane and, and the girls and convinced them that this is a big hit song and da-da-da, we should do this thing, blah-blah-blah. Anyway, link, long story short, we got in the studio, and they recorded. And they were so perturbed, I'll put it in a nice way, and and while she was singing the song, you know, baby, baby, in the attitude, it was a wrong key because it was in the key of uh, Gladys Horton. Mm-hmm. You know, it was in the wrong key because she never sang that low before. Right. But her voice took on a whole new thing, man. It, it became sultry. Mm-hmm. Or no, and she was so mad and so disgusted with this song, having to sing, being forced to sing this song. But it it put out uh, such a feeling, mm. a sexy feeling, and a style. And she became a stylist that night, you know. And, not, the, and, and, and that we, sound, well, we we start everybody started adapting the, the keys yeah. and singing, putting her down. I got she, she was baby. But just that attitude was the attitude that the song needed. And <laughs> and and now we all know the words of that song. Yeah, and 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 went. Shot up to the charts, I think it's so, two or three, two or three million copies, mm. straight to number one. And then we had like, oh man, second to number yeah. one, uh, thirteen of them in a row mm. with the Supreme. How cool was Marvin Gaye? Marvin Gaye was great, man, and just don't get on his bad side, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> that you know, was so cool. Though, oh, man. he was so good, man. Yeah. And, and we were personal friends too, mm-hmm. and because we were at Anna Records. Before we got to uh, Barry's place, Motown, mm-hmm. uh, we were with Barry's sister, uh, Gwen Gordy's place. And when they folded, uh, um, I just went over uh, to join Barry, and, and, and Marvin was already there with Stubborn Kind of Fella. Mm-hmm. And when we got a hold of him uh, with How Sweet It Is and Can I Get a Witness and mm-hmm. uh, Baby Don't You Do It, you know. Uh, but uh, I started thinking about uh, Can I Get a, uh, I mean, uh, what was it? Can I get over with it? No, how sweet it is. Mm-hmm. He did it in one take. I mean, Eddie was in there working with him on it. He said, "Come on, man, I gotta go." Ahead and time. Yeah, just give me the thing, and he looked at it. You know, <laughs> I got, I gotta go, man. You know, and then okay, man, all right, fine. Just hey, man, hey, don't don't, don't say that. Just let him do it. Just do it with him. Do it. He went in there and turn the thing on, man. <laughs> and <laughs> and they turned the thing. He put on his headphones. He said, "Mm-hmm." Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> and uh, I got did that song in one take. This, this take that you hear is the one take. Is the did. one take. And it's cold. It's man. took the thing down and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, well, if we had any complaints, yeah, forget it. Yeah, yeah don't, don't, he didn't care. He did, that was. He said, that's it. Yeah, part, walk part, out. Pardon the pun. It turned yeah. out to be sweet, though. It's, oh, sweet. Because yeah. <laughs> he knew what to do. It was in the wrong group. We always put Marvin's keys a little bit higher. Yeah. Because when he had to reach, he got magical. Oh, yeah. He started rolling up into that falsetto and doing things, yeah. man. That was like, I said, whoa. You know, and this guy's incredible. Incredible singer, man. He was wow. one of the best. Tell me quickly, uh, my time is up. I could do this for hours. Tell me about the, <laughs> tell me about the, uh, the Broadway. The, uh, Broadway oh, game. yeah. The, the First Wise Club. Yeah, first Wise Club, yeah. Yeah, opened up in uh, San Diego at the Old Globe Theater in July. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then we'll uh, iron out whatever it is to iron out there before we take it into Broadway, which is the first of the year, hopefully, uh-huh. or before. Wonderful stuff. Man, you guys have done a bunch of wonderful stuff. Down <laughs> Thank the, you. Thank they're you. legends in their own time. Uh, Thank you, man, Terrence. So, so, so many hits, so little time. Thank you. Lamont, <laughs> glad to have you here, man. Thank you, Terrence. Thanks for coming to see us in the 50th uh, year of Motown. My pleasure.